Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday morning, Thanksgiving week, and uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. Uh, looks like we're gonna have a warm Thanksgiving, which is a bummer. Uh, but that's one of the one of the weird things about Florida, I guess. So uh, grateful that you guys are able to join us this morning. Hopefully, you can find encouragement uh, this morning as we dive into the scriptures together. We are in the book of Proverbs. We are in chapter 11 today. Uh, we're in this section <coughs> in the book of Proverbs where Solomon is giving us these, just these principles to live by, these axioms for our life that just help us to recognize uh, what's most valuable in life. Uh, we can uh, make our convictions around these truth claims that are given in uh, the book of Proverbs. And so these are like these rapid fire type uh, statements that Solomon makes. Uh, and most of them deal with this idea, actually almost all of them deal with this idea that um, the things that are in conflict in this world is uh, the wisdom of the Lord versus the wisdom of the world. Uh, the wisdom of God, his His uh, His wisdom, his, his uh, truth, his uh, convictions, his values versus the world's values and their convictions and the temptations of the evil one. Uh, the world says, run after this, pursue these things, acquire these things and you'll be satisfied. God says, no, this is the way uh, of peace. This is the way of joy. This is the way of satisfaction. And they're in direct conflict. I mean, all through the scripture, we see that always in conflict. And there's no different here today. Um, we see some of the things that he talks about here. So, I'm just going to go <clears throat> over a couple of these different things. Again, chapter 11, there's tons and tons of things that you could look at um, and that we could talk about, but uh, we're going to look at just these several in this text. So um, if you start reading in chapter 11, uh, the first thing he says here in, in verse 1 is, is the Lord detest dishonest scales, right? Um, tr the treatment of other people, wrong, taking advantage of people, dishonest scales, it means you're lying about things, you're, you're milking the system, you're taking advantage of people. Um, and God says, listen, I, I hate it. I, that is det I detest it. it. It turns my stomach. I can't stand it when people take advantage of others. So we should always be a defender of those people who could be held, could be played the victim. Um, and so I just think that's important that we recognize, right? God is a father to the fatherless. He's a defender of widows. Two categories of people in the first century or in ancient ancient world that uh, they had uh, the, the, the deck stacked against them, uh, orphans and widows. And God says, no, I'll, I'll be a father to those fatherless, those orphans. I'll be, uh, I'll be a, um, a defender of widows. I will come to their rescue. So I just love that picture. We should be that as well. Verse 4, wealth, Solomon says, is worthless in the day of wrath. But righteousness delivers from death. Wealth is worth, worthless in the day of wrath. Uh, he gives us this picture here that our world is, is screaming, run after money, run after wealth, run after power, run after all these material things. They'll satisfy us. And I think to some level we all get wrapped up in that trap, right? Um, I'm not knocking Black Friday shopping because I, you get good deals. And if you're going to buy that stuff, you're gonna, it's better to get a good deal. I get that. But I think we we obsess with this stuff. Like I gotta have this, and man, I gotta I gotta beat that person to get this thing because my kid won't be satisfied or won't be happy at Christmas if I don't get that thing for him. Right? We we run after this. I gotta get the next promotion, thinking that's gonna satisfy us completely. But Solomon says, wealth, money, material stuff, it's worthless. It's worthless in the day when when your life really matters. When when everything counts, it doesn't matter at all. It's, there's no value to your wealth, right? Uh, death is no respecter of persons in terms of our wealth. Just because you have a lot of money does not mean you're going to escape that. Just because you have a lot of property or a lot of wealth or a lot of uh, uh, assets does not mean that cancer won't visit you or car wrecks don't happen uh, or that you won't stand before the Lord someday, right? All those things are true here. Um, long term, wealth doesn't matter. It, it just doesn't. So why pursue things that won't won't really matter in the end. And so he's not saying we shouldn't have a, a nice bank account. He's not saying we shouldn't have stuff. He's saying, but the pursuit of it, running after it with reckless abandon and forgetting our relationship with God, all right, 
using dishonest gain to get there. It means nothing in the end. I think that's important. Um, he says in verse 6, The righteousness of the upright delivers them, but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. Uh, this picture that um, the ways of the Lord are so much better. Uh, the ways of the Lord always bring joy, always bring peace, always bring comfort, always, always bring fulfillment. But the way of the world, right, unfaithfulness, evil desires, they don't. They, they end in ruin. They end in disappointment. They end in broken relationships. They end in uh, aloneness and depression and discouragement. And eventually, they lead to death. Um, but the ways of the Lord are good. Verse 11, through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is destroyed. So he's talking about something here that I think is really interesting. Um, the character of a people, and I say a people, a people group, um, a nation, a city, a family, uh, a church even. Uh, how we live our lives affects our legacy and, uh, and affects how we will be remembered, what, what will live on past us. He says here, through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. Um, if we as a church, right, would honor God, bless others, serve others, uh, communicate the truth, there will be blessing that comes, right? The upright, right, the upright in a city will result in blessing, uh, in exaltation. But if the mouth of the wicked is present, then that city would be destroyed. So it's this idea like, all along we see that, right? We see that those people in Israel that loved the Lord and 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 ran after him, uh, God blessed them, right? When they went up against foreign nations, he blessed them. We think of uh, nations that had a, an unwillingness to bless others, an unwillingness to show gratitude or an unwillingness to show uh, uh, fair treatment to others. God cursed those people. And I just think that's interesting how that dynamic works. Uh, you think about Sodom and Gomorrah. We're going to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah uh, this Sunday. Uh, that interesting dynamic. We normally chalk up Sodom and Gomorrah to being a, a, a city of sexual sin, and it certainly was. But it also talks about them in Ezekiel, that they were a rich city, but they would not share their wealth with others. They would not come to the aid of other people. Uh, and in the end, they were ruined because of those things. So I just think that's interesting. Let's not be people who are like that. Verse 22, uh, very interesting. Uh, well, let me, go, let me read verse 21 first. Verse 21 says, Be sure of this, the wicked will not go unpunished, but those who are righteous will go free. Right? There's freedom in Christ. There's freedom in our faith with Jesus. Um, but he says the wicked will not go unpunished. I think that's important that we recognize. Sometimes we watch the world that we live in and we think, man, all these people who are doing these dishonest things, they're getting ahead. They're making money, right? They're living in luxury. They got everything they need, everything they want, right? Why, why, God, would you do that? We have to trust in the timing of the Lord that those who do not align themselves with Jesus eventually will suffer because of their sins. Um, we shouldn't want that for them, but at the same time, we shouldn't be discouraged because the unfaithful are uh, seemingly triumphing in this world. We don't have to be upset about that. In the Lord's timing, he will do that. The Bible says in Hebrews, everyone will give an account for the way they lived. Everybody will stand before the Lord and give an account for how they've lived. Verse 22, so this talks about why we should be careful of how we live. Verse 22, like a gold ring in a pig snout is a beautiful woman who does not, who, who shows no discretion. Now this is an inter interesting image, uh, 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 like, a, like a gold ring in a pig snout, right? You can, you can put a gold ring in a pig um, and that gold ring might look good, but it doesn't change what the pig is, right? Uh, maybe you've heard that you can put lipstick on a pig, but it doesn't change what it is. Um, this was not meant to be a demeaning thing toward women. This is not a makeup thing. This is not that. He's saying, if you can look all the right parts, you can say all the right things and dress a certain way and attend the right church and you can... If we have not surrendered to Jesus etern and eternally, uh, internally, uh, if we have not submitted to him, um, it doesn't change who we are, right? The, the outside facade is not what matters. What matters is 
our heart that runs after God, right? God says, I don't judge the outward appearance, I judge the heart. Um, uh, Jesus told a parable in Matthew 23, actually not in a parable, he was teaching, speaking to the, to the uh, Pharisees, these religious leaders, and he talked about some of them being like whitewashed tombs. He said, you guys are like whitewashed tombs. You, you paint the outside of the tomb, right, where the stone is, the entrance, where you, you paint it all, you make it look nice, you put flowers up, but it doesn't change the fact that it's still a grave. Inside, it's full of dead men's bones. He said, it's like a cup. Uh, you could wash the outside of that cup, but if you don't wash the inside, if the inside's still dirty, it's still dirty. You don't want to drink out of that. Same thing in our life. If all we do is on the outward facade, make ourselves look good. We pray, we have a Jesus bumper sticker, we wear Christian t-shirts, we tag ourselves as Jesus followers on, um, uh, Jesus followers on, um, on Instagram or Facebook, right? But we don't live like Christ would want us to live, um, then it doesn't change the inside. We've gotta be careful of that. So I just want us to be careful of that and think about that as we live our life, evaluate measure our life. Think about where we stand with the Lord on those things. So just think about that, and um, I'll be praying for you in those things. Let's pray. God, thank you for uh, these words of insight, these words of wisdom. I pray, God, that we would live by those. We would surrender to you. We'd be faithful to you in all things for your glory, uh, for your exaltation, God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, guys, hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you guys tomorrow, 9 a.m. All right, God bless.